The basic definition of physical security is pretty straightforward, the physical protection of assets against attack. So some type of physical protection, again, whether it's a door lock or a chain or um, a security guard or barbed wire or a lethal trap where you kind of cover up a bunch of spikes in a hole in the ground with leaves, anything like that would be some type of physical security protecting the assets against physical compromise. But more importantly than the different types, I think, at the beginning is to understand that physical security is never absolute. There is no scenario in which physical security is perfect and absolute. Uh, even when I think of government installations and high security scenarios, it's exceptionally hard to provide absolute physical security unless the asset is completely unusable. So locked in a safe completely inaccessible to human beings or any kind of data access, that's the kind of physical security that would be absolute, but really doesn't make sense in the context of being usable. So it's important to have some physical security in place, but it's also important to understand that there's no perfect physical security. As an ethical hacker, we're looking for where are the weak points in physical security? Are there any weak points in physical security that we can exploit to mount our attack or make our other attacks more successful? That's where we're going to be focusing, I think, our attention during this video. The way I think of physical security is really in two parts. Protecting or dissuading an attacker is all about making sure that a physical security attack doesn't take place, whether it, that means stopping it before it happens by preventing it, for example, by making things look like they're really physically secure and therefore a physical attack would not be successful, or by defending actively against the physical attack by actually stopping the attack once it's taken place. And then detection, certainly if a physical attack takes place, and assets are compromised, finding out that the asset has been compromised, hopefully during the attack, during the physical compromise as it's happening, or if not, immediately thereafter, so some type of action can take place. Those two components are absolutely critical. Protection, I kind of do lump in with uh, prevention, because a lot of times they go hand in hand, as you'll see, as I as I show examples of perimeter protection, you'll see that many of them actually will discourage folks from mounting an attack in the first place. And detection certainly goes hand in hand with remediation. Once you know that there's some kind of attack that's taken place, a lot of times that leads directly into what do I do about it? 